we're going to finish up our video on equations right here. So notice how right here we have a quadratic equation. So I'm going to do a u substitution. I'm going to say let u equal sine theta. By doing this, I get 2u squared minus 3u plus 1 is equal to 0. Now I can factor it. So I have 2u, u, 1, 1, minus, minus. And there we have it. u is equal to 1 half, or 1. Plug it back in. So sine theta must be 1 half, or 1. And now I just do your circle values. If you want, you can draw your circle like this. Half happens right here and here. And then 1 happens right there. So our three answers are pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and pi over 2. And notice how I'm stopping there. That's because it says state is between 0 and 2 pi. That's important to know. This is only referring to one rotation. Okay, so that's our u substitution. For those who are really good at algebra, it's possible to just straight factor it. So some people just do this. 2 sine theta minus 1 sine theta minus 1. And notice how you get the exact same thing. It's just a little bit faster. You can do this too. Let's go to our next example. If you look at this, a lot of people want to multiply this out. Do not do that. It's already factored. So what we're going to do is just use our zero product property. Now, you might not have heard of this, or you might not even know you're using it. The zero product property says that if a times b equals zero, then a must be zero or b must be zero. So we're just going to take this thing right here. This thing must be zero. Or the other thing, cosine theta plus one must equal zero. So cosecant theta equals two, which means sine theta should equal to one half. Cosine theta is negative 1, and now we solve it. You can draw your circle here. Sine is a half here and here. Cosine is negative 1 right there. So we have pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and pi. Okay, two more examples. Solving a trig equation using identities. So first thing to note is look at this sine squared. And we have a cosine. So that's not going to work for now. we got to figure out what to do. So for cosine, there's not much we can do. We're just going to rewrite that. But sine squared, we can change that using our Pythagorean identity to 1 minus cosine squared like that. Now keep going. Notice how I'm multiplying it out. It's similar to our very first example. We now have a nice quadratic. Let's make the whole equation equal to 0. So 2 cosine squared theta plus 3 cosine theta plus 1. You can do a u substitution or just straight factor it. I'll just factor it since I already did a u substitution above. And there it is. Cosine theta equals negative 1 half or negative 1. I'll draw my circle. Negative half happens here and here. Negative 1 right there. So our answers are 2 pi over 3, pi, and 4 pi over 3. Now I go to our last example. Now this one, you want to make sure you fight your intuition, because your intuition is going to tell you to divide both sides by sine. Do not do that. If you do that, you're going to miss some answers. So for this one, you always want to make it equal to 0. So you want to write this. Notice how I just subtract the sine theta. Once you do that, we have to factor. Okay, so factor. So let's take out the sine theta. That's cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. And now we have our answers. Sine theta must be 0, or cosine theta must be 1. 
this one's interesting because sine theta is zero here and here, and cosine theta is one at that location. So the answers overlap a little bit. So the answers are zero and pi. So the main thing to note about this problem is don't divide. And the reason for that is because, if let's say we were to do that, we have cosine theta, sine theta equals sine theta. If you do this, you get cosine theta equals one. And notice how that does match, right? But then we're missing out on this part, the sine theta equals zero part, which we know does work. So you don't want to just divide that over like that. That's going to eliminate an answer. The exception to this rule is if you have something like this, like let's say you have sine theta equals cosine theta. In this example, you actually could divide by cosine. And that's because you're going to create this tangent right here. And then that's going to be easier to solve. So in that case, you could do it. But an example like the one above, make sure you simply don't divide out that sine function. For our next example, we'll be talking about how to use your calculator to solve these equations. So notice in the instructions it says, solving trig equations with a calculator. It also says round to four decimal places and across it out. We're going to put three. That's more standard. And you also want to note that there's a restriction on the answers from zero to two pi. So note that to yourself. This will restrict your answers. The process for these is pretty much always the same. You want to zero your equation. Okay, so equation equals zero. We love zero. So let's manipulate that cosine x plus 0 0.4317 is equal to zero. That's where you want to be. Then what you do, you take the equation portion right here, and you're going to want to graph this. And when you graph, put a big note, make sure you are in radians. That is huge. You have to be in radians. Otherwise, your graph will look really, really funky. Okay, so let's go to our calculator here. I'm going to go to apps, function. Check my top right corner. I can see I'm in radians. If I had this one, I'll be in degrees. So make sure in radians. I'm going to type in cosine x plus point four, three, one, seven, and graph. So notice how there are a number of solutions here. There's this one right here, this one, this one. They go forever. But we only want the ones that are, if you remember your notes here, zero to two pi. That's why this restriction is here. So first thing we're gonna do is just take a screenshot of this thing right here. Right about here should be fine. Okay, so here's the graph that we're looking at. And again, what we're doing is, since it's equal to zero right here, the solutions are the x-intercepts. So we're looking for, I'll make a big box for you. Looking for the x-intercepts, or your calculator will call them the roots. But of course, if you look at your graph, there are a ton, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. There's a whole bunch of them, but we only want the one zero to two pi. So what we're gonna do is look for the first couple and make sure they fit within the range. So here's our calculator, go to menu, function, root, and my plus sign to make it a little more clear. There's our first one, 2.017. So that one's gonna be good. I'll circle it. X equals 2.017. The next one, tap there, function root, 4.266. That's also good. 
and I'll check my next one. 8.30. Okay, so this one's interesting because at this point we know, I'll write it down, but I'm gonna cross it out. We don't want this because that's over the range. This exceeds two pi, which means all the answers after this, we don't want these answers. These are no good. So these are the only answers we want. And there we solved our first trig equation with a calculator. Let's go to our next one. You notice a squared here. So this is how we write it in class, but for the calculator, you have to write it like this. Even though it looks kind of awkward, this is how the calculator understands sine squared. So let's go back to our calculator now. Apps, function, delete. So sine x, f squared, minus sine x, minus 1, and graph it. Exact same process. I'm going to get a screenshot. Okay, so here's the graph we're looking at. And again, we're looking for the x-intercepts. So I can see a whole bunch over here. Let's find the first two. Those seem the most reasonable. So menu function root. There's our first one, 3.808. So we'll note that there. And then our next one, 5.617. And I could find this next one, but since this is 5, I pretty much know that this would be way too big. So I'm going to stop there, circle it, and we're done.